Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and Vegas 19 was released today. And in this update, they allow ProRes, ProRes RAW, and Blackmagic RAW editing. So I'm going to show you the best render settings for ProRes video to get the best look possible for your high quality footage. So inside Vegas here, we go up to the top left, we go to File, then we go about halfway down to Render As, and then we have a bunch of options on the left here, which have their advantages for different types of projects. But what we're going to choose is Apple ProRes, third one down. When we select this, we have a bunch of templates on the right, but it doesn't matter which one we choose because we're going to customize it anyways. So choose the top one and then hit customize template right here. Then the settings will come up. Always make sure include video is checked or you're going to have just a black audio video file and you're not going to see video. Frame size, if you select this, you can select some predetermined frame resolutions. But if you have a custom frame size that doesn't apply to any of these, you can choose custom frame size and manually type in what you want. Allow source to adjust frame size. I keep that unchecked by default because if you have multiple resolution clips, Vegas is going to try to assume what resolution you want to record in and ignore what frame size you just chose. So keep that unchecked. Profile, we drop this down. We have six options. This is basically a scale from lowest quality and lowest bit rate to highest quality and highest bit rate, which also includes chroma subsampling, which is the 422 and 444 where they come in. And this also differs depending on your frame rate. You can choose 422 proxy right here and render that out at 24 frames a second and you'll get a certain bit rate, maybe like about 150 megabits per second. But if you choose a frame rate over here up to maybe 59.94 or 60 and then render out in ProRes 422 proxy, your bit rate is probably going to jump, maybe even double to somewhere around maybe 200 or 300 megabits per second. So here's what I do. If I'm ever rendering something out just as a test and not a final product, I'll most likely render it out in 422 proxy. If I want to render something out in high quality, but it's extremely long and I don't want to fill up the hard drive, I'll typically choose 422LT or 422, and that's going to still render out a really high quality video, but also keep the file size a little bit lower than necessary. If I have something shorter, maybe like a five minute clip, and I want to render that out in a really high, high quality, I'll choose 422HQ. And now typically, depending on the camera you're using, 444 may not even apply to you at this point, but a lot of DSLRs are allowing you to record in something high quality like that. So ProRes 444 is pretty equivalent to RAW itself. So if you recorded in ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW, and then you've done some conversions and really put it back down to the Rec. 709 color space, and you still want to keep all that at extreme high quality, you can render out in ProRes 444 or 444XQ if you did a high quality recording. Now, keep in mind, choosing these two options are going to be extremely big file sizes. And you'd better have a good terabyte or two terabytes ready for what's about to be rendered out. But typically, you know, for Vimeo or high quality YouTube, I'll choose ProRes 422 or ProRes 422HQ. And then if I want to render something out just temporarily to show somebody or, you know, not really the final render, I'll choose proxy and maybe LT. So choose the one that suits you the most. I'm just going to go right in the dead center and choose ProRes 422. Frame rate, very self-explanatory. Choose from the predetermined frame rates that they have right here. Typically in America, most things are shot in 23 or 24. In European countries, things may be shot in 25 frames per second. So choose which one applies to you. I'm going to choose 23.97. Field order, you have the option of choosing none, which is progressive scan, or you can choose upper or lower fields first. I wouldn't recommend choosing either of these bottom two and keeping none chosen. Pixel aspect ratio, keep that at one. If you choose 1.3, things may get really wide for you. Color primaries has no option to choose. Same with transfer characteristics and matrix coefficients. Keep them all default. Let's go to audio. Make sure include audio is checked. And then let's go to our sample rate, drag that down. We can't choose anything other than 48, so keep it right there. Project setting, video rendering quality. If you drop this down, I like to put this on best personally, but it really doesn't make a difference on your outputted video. You can manually choose color spaces and color ranges to limit it or full if you wanted, but that's all kind of proprietary and you shouldn't mess with it unless you need to mess with it. If you don't know if you should mess with it or not, leave it alone. After you're done, there's no more tabs to customize, so we're going to rename it. So go up to the top here and rename it to something. After you're done, hit the floppy disk icon to the right, and that officially saves it. Hit OK, and it'll show up in your list of templates. You can select the star right beside it to favorite, so you can quickly find it. Next at the bottom, you can hit Browse and choose where you want to save this file to. Go ahead and hit Save, and then Render. And that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there, because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom. 